What's up everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, I'm going to do a deep dive into the layers functionality of Guide GPS. If you've been watching my channel for even a little bit, you know how much I love Guide GPS. I truly believe it is the best offline navigation app for you know, off-grid, overlanding, camping, off-roading adventures. It is incredibly powerful. And because of that, uh, there is a little bit of learning curve to it. Um, I've got some other tutorials on the channel to just kind of go into some of the basics. In this video, I want to do a deep dive into what I think is what makes Gaia stand out head and shoulders above every other offline navigation app. Um, no other app comes close to the number of map layers and map options and map tools that Guide GPS has. So uh, this will be tailored for uh, the overlanding, off-roading community. That, that's what we do here. Um, but this is applicable to, you know, if you like um, snow skiing or if you uh, or, or snowboarding or snowmobiling or hunting or fishing or hiking or whatever, uh, there are a ton of map options in there and so instead of picking the map layers that I'm picking, find something that worked for you and the, the principles are still the same. In this video, I'm going to primarily cover three things. Uh, first is the layers tab. And I'm, I'm doing this on my iPad. I've got my computer pulled up here. Same tools, same principles, um, slightly different location, but th th it's all the same. Uh, but since most of us use our phones or our tablets when we're out off-grid, uh, th that, that's what I'm demoing here. So I'm gonna go through the layers tool here, where you find all the layers, how you add them, how you stack them, how you can make some of them transparent and why. And then I'm gonna spend some time going through a few layers that I think are an absolute must. Uh, some of my, the ones that I just use all the time, the, the ones that I always have in my layers, uh, in my active layers tab. And then we're gonna discuss how to download them and how to have them for offline use. So that's the plan. The layers button is up here in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you're using a phone instead of a tablet, it is, it's, it's in the same spot. So, I mean, right, right there in the upper left hand corner, right there. And so that brings up this little menu here. So same thing on a phone, just a, a narrower screen. But right here in the upper right-hand corner, do you see the little stacked, looks like little stacked pieces of paper there? That's the layers. And that brings up this menu. You can drag that up and have full access to everything here. Now, there are three main sections here. One is your map overlay. Uh, this is just, this is where you turn on and off waypoints you have saved, routes you have saved, tracks you have saved, that sort of stuff. We're not gonna get into that on, in this video. Uh, but if you, you know, want a clear screen, with, which is what I'm using here, you can turn all that off, which is what I've done. If you want to be able to see your waypoints and routes and stuff, you can toggle those on and they'll be selected. Now, I, I do want to mention this does require Gaia Premium. This does require a Gaia Premium subscription. There's a link in the description. If you don't currently have Gaia Premium, uh, you can save 25% with that, with that link in the description. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is toggled in this map overlay section is this layered maps option. That's what gives you the functionality to have multiple maps stacked on top of each other uh, to make the, the best uh, viewing possible. So make sure right here the layered maps is toggled. Uh, very important. Uh, that is also found in one other location. I'll just show you where it is. Up here in the upper left hand corner, the little four arrows that kind of spread out there. If you go there, go to map controls, uh, where it says map menu, make sure layered maps is, is toggled. There is another feature in here called map packs. Um, if you like to do multiple activities and use different maps for different activities, say for example, um, you're a hunter um, and you want certain hunting maps available during hunting season and you wanna use that, you can actually set up a map pack just for hunting, you can set up a map pack for overlanding. It doesn't give you quite as much control as what I'm gonna show you, um, but it's a pretty cool feature. 
But listen, we're focused on overlanding. I, I don't want to get into the map packs right now. It, it's a pretty cool feature if you want to play with it, but I, I just prefer to do it do it this way. Going back to the layers, the you can see there's so there's the map overlays. There's also just below that where it says active layers. That's what you're currently looking at on your screen. Those are the layers that are active. So that's what you're currently viewing. And then below that you have inactive. And you can see my list is quite long here because this is stuff that I've looked at in the past. So it just keeps everything I've, I've pulled up kind of in this list for quick access. And then below that, if there's a map layer that you don't have, either active or inactive, um, it's down here in this add map layers. And that brings you to this. You have categories here, you can search, uh, you have categories for you know, United States, Canada, Europe, Australia. So it pretty much covers just about everywhere. Um, topo maps, road maps, there's a lot of cool stuff in the weather and feature overlays section. This is where you find the really cool stuff. Um, and I'll show you some of that here in just a minute as I'm building my layers. So that's, that's what this section is. So right now, it always will default when you first launch Gaia. Um, it, it, right now mine's set to Gaia Topo um, as, my, as my one layer. I don't want that layer. Uh, it, it's a good layer, but I actually want a newer layer that Gaia has come out with called Gaia Overland. And so it's not here in my uh, in my inactive stuff. So I'm going to go here to add map layers. I'm going to search here just for uh, overland. And there it is, Gaia Overland Feet. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click add. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back up here at the top. Um, where'd it go? There it is. So I put it here in my inactive. I'm going to tap on it. And now Gaia Overland is here. Uh, you can see I have two, two maps now that are active, Gaia Overland and Gaia Topo. I don't want Gaia Topo anymore, so I'm going to click that red X. And I just want Gaia Overland feet. You can see below it, it now says base map. So that's your foundation uh, there in, the, in, in your layers. Gaia Overland is on the very bottom. Everything that you add to it is then going to stack on top of that. Up next, I like to... Um, do what's called the MVM layer. So that is the motor vehicle use map. If you are off-roading in any national forest, any U.S. national forest, not BLM land, not national park, but national forest, the MVM layer is an absolute must. Uh, they pull that data from the U.S. Forest Service and it shows the legal trails in a national forest. So I'm going to add that. And now that is on top. And you see anything on top of your base map has this slider. So I can move that right and left. That toggles its opacity. So how, whether or not you can see through it. And for the MVM layer, I just want that all the way up to 100%. And I'm going to leave it there. If I zoom in here to the Ozark National Forest uh, in Arkansas, I, I, I'm in Arkansas, so I know this area really well. Um, it is easy to tell um, what's Gaia Overland and what's MVUM by just kind of turning things off. So you see these really bright white and black lines? I, I know those are all on the MVUM overlay. So if I turn those off, then this is what's on the Gaia Overland layer. And if I toggle those back on, that's the MVUM. A lot of people get confused because they see a, a trail like this one uh, with these brown dashed lines and then you go over here you see these brown dashed lines. On Gaia Overland that just shows there there is or there was the, a road there at some point. That's there's there's map data uh, for that. So but by using the motor vehicle use map toggle that on and off well, now this one over here that I showed you, that's got the MVM overlay shading on top of it. This one over here that looked just the same, uh, it is not. So that tells me this is a legal trail to be on. 
This over here, this is not. Uh, this is probably just an old road. Um, it's, it's closed now for whatever reason. Uh, the U.S. Forest Service closed it. Um, so this is not a legal trail to be on. But this one up here is. So you can see this one right here. You can see the difference right there. They look the same on the map if you're just looking at Gaia Overland. But by having the MVM layer on top of it, you can easily tell which trails are legal to be on. Now, I do have people that message me saying, I, I've loaded the MVUM, I, I can't, I don't see it. Well, that depends on your layer order. Like I said, everything, this, the layers are actual layers. So you've got your base layer and then things stacked on top of it. If I move the MVUM below Gaia Overland, um, it, you, there you go, you can't see them anymore. And that's what trips people up. So you've got to make sure that the, the map you want as your base map is, is actually on the bottom and says base map. So Gaia Overland, MVUM is on top of that. So these are very much layers stacked on top of each other. Um, some layers uh, like the MVUM are, are, that's like just for service roads. There's no other data in the MVUM layer than the roads. If I, so I can go here, I can move this slider to the left. And as you can see, I've made them semi-transparent. Um, you can, I can turn them all the way off. I can turn them all the way, way on, or I can kind of go in the middle here and make them transparent. But as you can see, all this green space, nothing is changing on the main map because the only data in there are those legal roads from the Forest Service. Now, let's look, just, just to compare, let's pull up um, an old U.S. Forest Service map that I used, I used to like until the Overland layer came out. It's USFS Classic. Uh, this is a map from the Forest Service. And you can see here, it's, it's under, it goes Gaia Overland, then USFS Classic, then MVUM. Uh, the USFS Classic layer only covers national forests. So if I zoom out here, you can see, you know, these white shadings, those are the areas that the US Forest Service map covers. That USFS Classic, that's where it covers. These areas outside that are in green, that's what's underneath it in the Gaia Overland layer. So I I'm, I'm hope I'm making sense here of, of how layers are stacked on top of each other. So you can see here this to the right uh, where it says Boston Mountains, that's Gaia Overland. Then what you're looking at here is that US, um, that US Forest Service Classic. And then you've still got the black and white lines on top of it with the MVM layer on top of that. So if I want the, if I move, um, oops, well that worked. If I move um, Gaia Overland on top of USFS Classic, well now you can't see USFS Classic anywhere because Gaia Overland is covering it up. It, it covers the, in, the, the entire United States. So it, it's covering it up. So the, your layer order is important. But I don't like USFS Classic anymore. I just use that to show kind of the layer stacking there. So I'm gonna turn that off and get rid of it. There we go. So now Gaia Overland and the MVM. Now the Gaia Overland layer is awesome. And some people, it has really good topography built into it. Uh, you can see in this, I'll, I, I can very easily tell that up here is um, a, a ridge line. This is a, um, a, a ravine down through here with steep uh, bluff lines, steep sides on either side of it. Some people can't see that as well on a topo map. Um, so I like to add another layer called Shaded Relief US. If you don't have it here and you're inactive like I don't, like I do, um, go to Add Map Layers, Weather and Features Overlay, and then it will be here under Shaded Relief US. So 
that's that's where you find it if you can't find it there. Um, where did it go? There we go. Shaded relief. Yes, I'm gonna turn that on, and I'm gonna turn it all the way up. I do want that below the MVM because I want MVM stuff on top of it. But if you turn shaded relief up to 100%, this is what it looks like. Um, it's it's just black and white shading, and from this, it is very clear. These are steep. Um, steep elevation changes through here. So what I'll do is I'll just turn that down to about 30%. So that's that's all the way off. That's all the way on. And so if I turn that up to, you know, maybe about 30%, you can see it really makes the typography pop. So I love the shaded relief layer. Um, just a little bit, maybe about 30% visibility on top of the Gaia Overland layer, on top of really any layer. And it just makes it the, the top of lines pop and you can really see the terrain. That's important to me because if I'm in, you know, some remote destination, um, I want to know if I'm, you know, about to be up on a ridge line and maybe there's a storm coming or if I'm down in a ravine and, um, you know, I, I want to know the typography of where I am. If I'm maybe looking for a campsite um, out of, out of the wind that I'm going to look for terrain on the map that's down low, maybe in a canyon, maybe shaded in a bluff line, and not up on top of a ridge line or an overlook. Uh, so that's that's what I can tell by the topography of an area. And having that shaded relief like that just makes it pop. Um, the other thing I like to have is uh, the U.S. hydrography layer. The Gaia Overland layer does a Good job with all the major things. This is the, um, that's the Arkansas River up here. Um, here's this little piney creek. It's there, but there's some other ones that I know in this area. There's the big piney creek. Um, if I go over here, I know there's a creek that goes through here, but it's, it's so small, it doesn't show up on the, the Gaia Overland layer. So if I go here, the layer that I want to fix that is called U.S. Hydrography. And it is, it, it's like the MVUM in that the only information on the hydrography layer are water features, streams, lakes, rivers, that sort of thing. That's the only data that's in there. So it's great to put on top of it. I'm going to, again, this is in the weathers and features overlay section if it's not here in your inactive like mine is. So I'm going to tap on the plus. Go up here, I'm gonna make sure that's under MVUM because I always want MVUM on top of everything. So I'm gonna turn that on. And now you can see, I, I've got this little blue line showing that there is a stream through here. There's actually a little dotted blue line showing that there's a smaller stream coming down through here. Um, if you look over here at the Big Piney, now it's got a wider stream there because Big Piney is a pretty decent sized stream. Same over here, you can see where the pools are um, in, this, in this creek that flows into the Big Piney. So it's just, it's got a, a better water data on the U.S. hydrography layer. So that's why I like to use it. It does sometimes cover up names and stuff. So if I turn that off, uh, see Big Piney Creek, it's just listed as a, a, a blue line there with a the name, but U.S. hydrography, I can very clearly see that. That's, that's obvious. So I like that layer. And then uh, public lands is another one. The different type of lands that we travel through, be it uh, Forest Service or BLM, National Park, uh, wildlife refuges, um, you know, national monuments, every type of land has different rules. Um, and you also crisscross into private land um, so I like to keep the public land layer active and always there. I put it right under the MVUM. And if I turn that up, what that does, it makes very clear shadings of different lands. So this green shading that you see through here, uh, that's U.S. Forest Service boundaries. If I zoom in, I can see where U.S. Forest Service uh, starts and stops with private property. So if I'm driving down here through on this little trail 1240, um, I know when I get to here, 
I'm crossing into someone's private property because that is no longer U.S. Forest Service land. And if we scroll up here, this brown, I know that's National Park Service. So that's the Buffalo National River. Um, up here, uh, the purple, that's uh, recreation areas. And then if we go, let's go way out west. Uh, here you see a bunch of different colors. Yellow is going to be BLM land. Uh, again, this brownish is uh, National Park Service managed. That's a national preserve. Then we've got... Uh, this National Laboratory is in this pink color. If we go, oh, where's one of the other ones? Uh, this purple land here, um, that's state land trust. Some states have state public land. Um, they have different rules than BLM land. Um, so it's always good to know what type of land you're going through. So if I'm in this area, I know I am crisscrossing um, between state land and BLM land as I travel through some of these areas and I may be able to camp on one area and I may have to have a permit to camp on another. So you just got to check those, those rules, but it's always good to know the type of land that you are traveling through. So uh, let's go back over here to Arkansas. Um, there's this blue over here. That's uh, that's wildlife designation area. Um, State fish and wildlife manages that. So you can click on these and gain access. This pink is uh, Joseph T. Robinson. Department of Defense, the, 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 the Department of Defense manages that. So you can see who manages each area. Um, this right now here, this green, that is Ozark National Forest, that's managed by the Forest Service. So good information there. Um, for when you when you need to know what type of land you're on. I don't like to have public land visible at all times because it does cover up some of the, the information. You can see if I turn public lands off here, uh, it's, it's a lot clearer screen. So um, I, I, I keep it in here in my active layer, but I manually toggle it on and off just so that what I'm looking at on my screen is not covered up by additional color. So you can see the difference there. Um, yeah, look at these terrain features here. If I turn that off, it just becomes a lot clearer. So that's that's why I do that and have, uh, it, it's there. It's always there when I need it. And I just toggle the slider on and off. That way I can see what I'm, you know, see the map very clearly. Uh, some other very useful ones that uh, if you, you know, do this overlanding thing a lot, and if, if you want to know when you're going through private land and who owns that land, uh, there's a map called the private land layer. I don't, I don't keep this one active. I, I like to, to have it available for reference sometimes, uh, especially when I'm planning. But when I'm out on a trip, uh, I don't usually keep this one active. Some people do, but just keep in mind, the more layers you have active, that's going to take up more storage space on your device. So let's turn on the private land layer and make sure it's uh, maybe on top of public land. And so now you get these little, these little boxes. So if I'm traveling here on Victor Road, you know, I'm going through here. I know I'm on U.S. Forest Service land, and then I get to here. Well, now I'm on uh, Laney Prince's land. So if I get off the road, and then you know, I'm going to be trespassing which is not good. Um, so here I'm on, there's Marvin Lee Dillard's land. Sometimes if you, you click on them, here is Christine McElfish land, uh, owner, another owner, there's their address. Um, it, it, so you've got some contact information in there if, if you need it. Some of them even have phone numbers. Not all of them, but some of them do. Depends on what's publicly available um, for the data set. But the, the private land layer is a, it is a handy tool uh, for when you need it. I just don't, uh, I don't use that very much. So for the most part, this is what my layers tab looks like. Uh, no matter, you know, pretty much no matter where I'm going, this is, this is what I'm using. Uh, Gaia Overland layer on the bottom, shaded relief with about maybe 30% uh, transparent. 
uh, US hydrography for the streams, public land, so I can toggle back and forth and know uh, what type of land I'm on. And then anytime I'm in the US Forest Service area, the motor vehicle use uh, map there or the MVM overlay. Uh, that's it. Some other helpful tools uh, that I just think are really cool in Gaia um, are if, if you're a photographer, uh, if you're a photographer, this light pollution layer is so cool. You can turn that on and zoom out. And here's the United States. And, you know, if you want to know where the dark skies are, so you can maybe see the Milky Way, um, you can, you know, I, I, I'm going to leave my city and get out of this area because there's a lot of light pollution here and maybe go up here in this area, you know, in the Ozarks and go up there and see the Milky Way or um, you can toggle that down just a little bit so you can see what you're looking at. So, you know, that, all these hot spots. You go out west, look at all this dark sky out here. That's ah, beautiful. Look at that. So I can turn that down a little bit and I can see, okay, we're going to get away from Denver area here and we'll have some nice dark skies over here in the, in, in the Colorado Rockies. Um, so really cool layer there if you're a photographer, if you just love astronomy type stuff, the, the light pollution layer is awesome. Um, if you are a pilot or a drone pilot like, like I am, there's actually um, VFR maps. In, in Gaia GPS, which is pretty cool. So if you're out and you know flying your drone, you need to see what type of airspace you're in. The VFR map is cool to have. Um, cell coverage, you know, we get out to these places to, to, to get away from cell coverage a lot of times so that we can't be contacted by work or that sort of thing. But sometimes emergencies come up if you're out and you need to check in with family or you do need to check in with work. Um, there's cell coverage maps in here. If you go down to uh, map layers, weathers and feature overlays, you've got AT&T, um, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, all of that here. I'm, I'm on AT&T, so I use AT&T, which I've already got in the inactive layer here. Um, so turn that on and turn it all the way up and boom now i can see whoops now i can see where my cell phone coverage is so uh, this particular weekend i'm going to be up in the ozarks and you can see there's not a lot of cell phone coverage up here there's some up here on these higher elevations through here but they're they're, they're pretty spotty at best so if i'm in a situation where i need cell signal because there's an emergency, I need to check in with my kids or my, or my wife or something, I know, okay, if I can get up here on this, on this road, I'll probably get some cell signal and can make, you know, send a text, make a call, uh, that sort of thing. So the, the cell phone coverage layers are awesome tools. And then, you know, if you're, especially if you're traveling out west, there's a lot of times in the summer, uh, your trips can be impacted by wildfires. So if you go to the uh, add map layers, again, weather and feature overlays, uh, you've got wildfires, historical wildfires. Um, wild, well, um, where? Oh, I've already got it active, so let's go back. So wildfires current, wildfires historical, um, if, you have, if you have cell signal, because some of this stuff is downloading live data, so it can't be used offline because it's got to be able to connect to, uh, you know, the information to pull the live data down. So, you know, if you see smoke in, in the distance, you want to see is there an active wildfire there, you can pull up that layer and check the, the, the wildfire status. Uh, we were in Colorado two years ago when we're driving through an area that had clearly suffered a wildfire. And I was just curious what that was. So I can go to the wildfires U.S. historical layer, pull it up, and look at the historical data when wildfires were there. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, but those are all useful tools that uh, I, don't, I, I don't keep active. I, I use those for planning or to find information when I get home, that sort of thing. So... Um, you can even get uh, precipitation forecasts. So you've got precipita precipitation forecasts, 48 hours, there's 24 hours, there's a couple different ones. But again, that requires data 
to pull that down, but it does show it very clearly on the map. So let me pull that up. I'm just, I'm just curious what the current forecast is for my area, because since I'm heading up there this weekend. So in this area, you're looking at, uh, you know, potentially three quarters of an inch of rain. So we are supposed to get some rain tomorrow. Uh, so that's that's handy to know. Down here, if you're looking at you know an inch and a, inch and a quarter um, down here in these areas, luckily I will not be up there. I'll be up here in these areas um, uh, up here. So we'll we'll see what that gets. But that's really handy to have just what the precipitation forecast is. Okay, next. Now that I've shown you the layers and how I organize them. Uh, the primary ones that I use and why. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time on the Gaia Overland layer because it, to me, is hands down the best layer uh, of, of any app that I've used. Um, Onyx, um, uh, Overland Bound has a new app out, um, All Trails, Avenza, uh, the Gaia Overland layer just has so much information on it. Uh, for this, I'm going to go out west a little bit. I'm going to go over here to Colorado and show you some of the really cool things. So we don't have seasonal trail closures here in Arkansas because we just it doesn't get that cold. Uh, but out in Colorado, we know that they do. And all, that type of information is on the maps. So as you zoom in on, um, on an area... On a road, you can, uh, you, sometimes you may have to toggle the MVUM layer off just to see it, because it can cover it up. So I know that uh, this trail, which is Holy Cross Trail in, uh, in Colorado, it, it says here, it opens uh, 521 to 1122. Uh, so basically from May to November, that trail is open. From December to, to, to May, um, to the beginning of May, it's, it's closed. So that information is available on the Gaia Overland layer, which is super handy to have. You can see uh, these differences. See how these trails here are brown dots, uh, kind of brown dashed. Uh, these trails here are gray dashed. Uh, the brown is a, is a dirt road and the gray is a gravel road. So it shows you different road types, which is really cool. Um, another cool thing that Gaia has that I've never seen on any other map. There's some resources out there. Uh, but, you know, when we're out on one of our, our trips, finding campsites can be one of the most stressful, um, one of the most stressful things on a trip because they're, they're not always readily available. Um, they you know, could be taken, could be a popular area, and you just can't find a campsite because of the, the type of season that it is. Uh, well, on the Gaia Overland layer, it's, uh, it's actually got some primitive campsites marked. That's uh, It's all open source information that Gaia finds and curates and, and pulls in. But like if I zoom in on the map here, see that little uh, campground sign? Uh, there, there's, there's a campsite there, a named campsite. So if I'm in this area and I see that, I, I can go look. Well, we actually put that to the test um, this, past, uh, this past year. We were over here north of Glenwood Springs and out we were looking for a uh, looking for a campsite, and just happened to see these two icons on the map. Um, from we were coming up this road here, and we, were, we were kind of this road, and I could see in the distance that there was uh, there was a truck um, with a, a camper top up there, and so we turned on this road to see what this campsite was here on the lake. Had great potential. Um, this was the campsite that we found uh, right here. This, this was the campsite that we found. One of my favorite campsites we've ever found in Colorado. I uh, got the paddleboard um, and kayak on the lake. It was quite spectacular. Um, and we found that because of um, the, the Gaia Overland layer. Um, and if you, as you look around, there's, there's actually an official campground here. But all over this area, there's primitive campsites. Um, along the along the lake up here, I mean, there's just campsites marked everywhere, and they're they're available. And this is here's a public campground, so this is probably a private campground where you have to pay to uh, to camp. But so many cool resources you can see uh, springs marked all over the place. We were in Idaho 
um, two years, uh, last year, and we were camping, and I looked on the Guy Overland layer, and just, just upstream from where we were, it showed that there was a spring on the map, so I just took off and wanted to see if it was, if it was really there. And lo and behold, walked up maybe 100 yards on the, uh, up the creek, and there was a, a, a stream, um, a spring bubbling into it, so that was, that was pretty cool. A um, bunch of, you know, major campgrounds are on there, uh, land access. We were also in Colorado um, traveling with Brad and Regina from Trail Recon. And, um, you know, Brad's 392 is, uh, it's thirsty. And so we were toward the, we, we left camp that morning and Brad was concerned about how much you know, how, how far away the nearest gas station was. We were camped um, not too far away from uh, Canyon City. And so I pulled up the, the Gaia Overland layer and looked and um, boom, there was, there was an Exxon right there. And so I found the nearest gas station because of the information on the Gaia Overland layer. Uh, I know that there's a, a hospital there. Um, there's a, the city market for, for groceries. There's another Safeway for groceries, multiple gas stations, uh, restaurants listed on here. Tons of information in the Gaia Overland layer that I've just never seen on one layer before. And then one more cool thing that, uh, that, that we found. So we were traveling along here uh, on the... Uh, in the, the San Isabel National Forest. And we were coming up uh, this county road 634 and I happened to look over and I saw this uh, binocular icon pop up. And I, I clicked on it and it just says um, unnamed viewpoint. And based on the terrain here, uh, that ridge line looks like it probably has a pretty cool view there. And so we just decided to drive to it to check it out. And uh, this was the view that we had. Uh, we, we're, this is us coming back down, but up there at the top, this amazing view of the valley floor below. Uh, it was quite spectacular. It was a cool place to camp up there. And we found that because of the Gaia Overland layer. So we we found a bunch of those little binoculars. There's another one right there. Um, the Gaia Overland also uh, highlights ATV trails, uh, side-by-side -side trails that... Uh, you know, aren't, aren't legal for us in a Jeep or a Forerunner or that sort of thing, but for OHV people, um, you know, all these are, are legal for ATVs and side-by-side. -side. So all that's on the Gaia Overland layer too. Tons of information there. Uh, so highly recommend. Uh, the Gaia Overland layer is me now. I mean, it, it's the best map out there. You're just not going to find a better one. Okay, so that's that's covers that. Let's now go into downloading your layers. To download layers, you click this plus sign up here in the upper, uh, kind of right there on the top, and you click here where it says download maps. It's going to bring up this box with four blue handles. This red area, that's the area I've already got downloaded. So um, let's uh, just move over here. Let's go out, oh, oops. Um, let's go out over here to Utah, because Utah is cool and pick an area that I've never done before. So and you can see here through the red, uh, there's a good mix of US Forest Service. There's national forest through there. There's national parks with Bryce and Zion. Uh, there's BLM land out here. Uh, so good, good mix of, of land there. Up here at the top, you see where it says 61,000 tiles, 1.21 gigs. If I were to download that area right there, that's how much space it would take up on my iPad. Um, and here I can, I can toggle the layers and what, I'm, what it's looking at there is what's in my active layer box. So if I don't want, even though the, like the MVUM is turned down, it's still going to download it. Public lands is turned down, it's still going to download it. Um, so all that is what's in that information there to download. Um, so if there's something here that I don't want, I can get rid of it uh, in my download. Now, um, if I go up here, See how that up there turned red and now says 126,000 tiles, uh, basically two and a half gigs. Well, the fact that it's red means I can't download it. Uh, Gaia has a limit on 100,000 tiles. Uh, and the, the size of those tiles is going to depend on how many layers and what layers you have active. If you're trying to download satellite imagery, 
that's a lot of tiles because satellite imagery takes up a lot of data. Um, I know the shaded relief. Um, it, it's it's a decent chunk of stuff. If I happen, if I decide I don't need shaded relief, I, I can see that just fine. Uh, if I turn that off, it will free up a lot of tiles that I don't the, that I don't need. Um, so I can if if I you know that's too much. So I'm just going to size it down, and it's hundred thousand. There you go, ninety five thousand tiles. I can download that whole area in Onyx. That's probably 20 or 30 downloads in individual because because they really limit the amount of um, uh, the amount of area that you can download for offline use in Onyx. So if I want that much area, uh, you it, it's it, it's a long tedious process to get in Onyx. Uh, and then once I've got this area that I, that I want, I'm just going to click save. And even here, I've got options to add more stuff or turn off stuff. Um, it is, this is a fairly new feature within the last year. It says include data to create and navigate routes offline. I've always got that toggled so that if, you know, maybe something comes up and we want to punt and go somewhere else that we didn't have planned, I can make a new route with the offline routing data and, you know, pre-plan a route at camp. And before you had to have cell signal or at least data, Wi-Fi, whatever, to, to be able to get that routing data. Now you can download it, so it's super handy. If I want to add, you know, maybe I want to add AT&T, I can, I can do that. So now I can add, download the cell coverage map for this area and include it. So if it's, uh, if it's grayed out, like this Google, like this one, um, that means adding that light pollution, uh, it works, this landscape. I can't click on that, and that means, uh, that means if I, uh, there's not enough tiles available to be able to, to add that one. So uh, it doesn't let you add things you can't. Uh, and then I would just click next and give it a name, um, Utah, we'll say Utah West. And then I would click done and then save. I'm not gonna do it now because I don't actually wanna save it. And this will take go through the process of saving everything that, that I wanna download it. Uh, some layers, like, like I said, the shaded relief, that's pretty data heavy, so that can take a while to download. So make sure stuff like that you download when you're at home and on Wi-Fi. But let me show you one more really awesome thing with the Gaia Overland layer. Um, and you can't do this on anything else. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to turn off everything but Gaia Overland. Um, get rid of it. Come on. So come on. There we go. So I've got the only layer I have active is Gaia Overland. It is super handy to just have a solid base map of, of, of everywhere. Um, you know, sometimes you're traveling and maybe the, the weather in one location changes abruptly and you're like, I don't wanna, uh, we're not gonna ride this one out. We're gonna go somewhere else with better weather. Uh, maybe it, you know, the temperatures drop and you wanna go you know, lower elevation. Uh, over to the desert. Well, sometimes that can be a challenge if you don't have that area downloaded. Maybe you just downloaded, you know, just the mountains of Colorado and you didn't download the deserts of Utah, but they're only a few hours from each other. So um, it, it's really handy to have just a good base map of everywhere. And Gaia Overland lets you do that. The data set for it is so small that watch what you can do. Um, it is so cool. So I'm hit the plus on download maps. Like I said, the only thing I have here is Gaia Overland. That, that, that's all I got active. Um, I can basically, there we go. I, I can download the entire Western US from Oklahoma West with it, just the Gaia Overland layer, which it's, it's a fantastic layer. So if, you know, if you're in a bind and you just need a good base map, for being off of the grid, Guy Overland is the way to go. And because it's such a small data set, because uh, of how they have it set it up, you can just, you can download the entire Western U.S. in one download, and it's fast. Um, I mean, it's it's almost four gigs. And then I can come over here. I'm like, let's say we're going to go over here to, uh, um, you know, we want to cover Maine. I can't get that far. And we want to get the the entire Eastern U.S. 
There we go. I can get the entire Eastern U.S. in one download. And then, to, you know, I can have the entire U.S. In, in, in three downloads. You can't do that in any other, in any other app. That you can't. Um, you would spend a week in, in Onyx just clicking all the little boxes, trying to get offline data for everywhere. So super awesome that you can do that. We love traveling out west a lot. So on my phone, um, I've got this whole section uh, west of um, Oklahoma. And so, you know, all the Rockies, all the BLM land out there, um, I've got that on my phone. So anytime we're out and need offline data, uh, we can go wherever we want to. And I don't have to worry about, oh crap, I didn't download these, these maps. Uh, so super handy resource to have. I, I think that covers everything I wanted to, to do in the layers. Um, I, I want to encourage you, spend some time. Look at, look at the layers. There's so much cool stuff in there. There's historic maps. If you're a, a, a map nerd and love you know, looking at old maps, there's even historic maps from the 1800s, uh, early 1900s in there. Um, all different topo maps, different parts of the world. Um, it, there's just so many cool things in there. Hunting maps. They've got hunting overlays for all the different counties, all the different uh, wildlife options for hunting. Uh, elk, bear, deer, you know, you name it. They've got hunting maps in there. Uh, nautical maps. They've even, if you're a sailor, they've got nautical maps in there. Um, so, so much cool stuff. Gaia is incredibly powerful, um, but it can be overwhelming. So hopefully this layers deep dive will, you know, will help you organize your stuff and help you figure out uh, how to find stuff, download it for offline use, uh, how to stack your layers and maybe you, know, you load something and you can't see it. Well, no, maybe you understand why. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of these. I'm going to be doing some probably about every other month. Uh, I'll do one, I know for sure, on, on organization. Um, I'm going to be doing one on uh, some, some detailed route planning and um, you know creating routes, sharing routes, that sort of thing, dropping waypoints. Um, I've got a, a whole series of these deep dives that I want to do. So... Um, Hopefully this was helpful. If you've got other general questions, uh, you know, differences between uh, app and web, that sort of stuff, uh, I've got other tutorials. I'll drop a link to my last uh, just general intro to Gaia down in the description. And um, you know, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Give me feedback there. If you like the video, please give it a like. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've got a goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers by the end of uh, by the end of the year, and would love your help to, to make that. Uh, make that a reality. Uh, if you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel, if you want to gain access to all of our um, data in Gaia GPS, I mean, look here. This is, uh, this is all the places um, we have, we've been. Um, not every one of these waypoints, but you know, but we've, we've been a lot of places and we continue to go more. If you want access to our GPS data, there's a link in the description to our Patreon um, through our, our Patreon uh, support page. And we, we appreciate that. We do special content, special events uh, for that group. And then for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.